Yeah, I'll get my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here till midnight. <laughs> Watch you eat a couple slices. <laughs> Kind of nice that he's starting over with me. I'm probably without me having to get the answer right now. Hey, my connection was lost too. It's not good. You haven't been kicked off yet, though? No. Uh -huh. I don't know if you said I can't get it to. So, what to see your picture of you? Yeah. you want This earlier because I remember seeing something on Google Plus about you guys had an on air or a hangout or something. Yeah, we did do it. We had no, no we issues. I don't think you should try to work laptop. And you're just going to throw me all and stuff. I guess you could point the work laptop. Yeah, I mean, we got two, so if I get the screen, and yeah. then you should be about oh, the same. Let's see if I can figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we need a mirror, you know. Right next. Hey, what's up, man? Long time no see. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. Good to see you here. Yeah, man. Did you present it? No, hell no. <laughs> you wouldn't want to watch that. So much bad when it shows. <laughs> what do you mean? Because of the camera? Yeah. Why is it backwards? Because it, it's not. Um, Can you revert? Can you go into your video settings and reverse it? I need to do that on a map. That was my first video. How did you hear about it? I don't remember.
Maybe Google effects. Does anybody know how to reverse a, a Mac video because what we're displaying on Google right now is a mirror image. Mirror of what? No, it doesn't look like a mirror to me. It doesn't? No, it might Oh, sweet. Okay. Don't question it. <laughs> <laughs> can you um, yeah. can you reply or send out? I I just did oh, yeah. by email. Well, is that good enough? Oh, after you're done. <laughs> you can't really do that. Well, for me, anyway. Can I? Are you using that wire? Yeah. Uh, that does look backwards. When I it. Yeah, I might be nice. Let this, I'll let this read in there. Isn't that weird? It's backwards for you now. What happened? Oh, you're, uh, you're looking at your camera. Oh, I got a little better, I think. Can I see my screen? Yeah, be semi readable at least. How'd you get there? Oh, that's for there. My microphone. You just need to.
Yeah. Did that change with broadcast? Yes. <laughs> It's brand new as of yesterday, so I feel privileged just for you. What? Uh, that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Is it not working? No, I got it hooked up and I. We came out of the bank with some wire. So you broadcasting now? Yeah. Oh, you check in through that. Right. Just there on the and yeah, exactly. well, that's what we call the new project. And then you're building like, we built half of the, so let's get the guy and get you going there. Yeah, we should. So, is it on? Did you turn it on? Yeah, it's on. We got the same shirt on. Did you give you a chance to see All right. Hey, guys. Uh, it is 702. Um, I'm Kyle Buchanan. Um, Lucas, unfortunately, Lucas Myers has, has left us. He's on to bigger and better things in uh, California. So uh, he kind of handed it off uh, or gave us the game to Shannon, myself, and Ian Quattlebaum, um, the rain. So we're, we're going to try to to revive the group. Um, last time I checked, we've got 685 members, which is, I mean, I, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, I think since I've started participating as an organizer. I'm, I'm busy answering emails and you know working through job postings and things like that and trying to coordinate and actually Josh has been doing a great job with finding places and topics and speakers so far. So um, yeah we've got these cool t-shirts. Um, I'm going to get more printed so the, the idea behind it is if, if you contribute in any sort of Fashion to the Triangle JavaScript meetup group. I mean, if you were to present or do, um, I don't know. I guess we'll figure out what, what we deem to be. Uh, yeah, be worthy. Worthy of a T-shirt. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get more of these printed off. Um, if you haven't grabbed a raffle ticket, um, there's is it five or six shirts? I think it's five now. Okay, Let's, we'll talk about that other one. <laughs> Yeah, so if you didn't get a raffle ticket, there's there's five uh, Angular shirts that we're going to be giving away at the end here. And then if you haven't grabbed the Angular JS sticker, please please go ahead and do so. But um, I was hoping to make this less of a presentation. I mean, I'm going to present to you guys, don't worry. Um, but I hope it's interactive. Um, I I hope these meetups are you know a good place for people to come and network and work on things together and. If you've got any issues, somebody in this room has worked with that library before, so you know, don't hesitate to 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 be active within the within the group. Um, is there anything that you want to? Yeah. Okay. You can sit down now. And, and this is we're trying something new. This is on the we're, we're it, per, there's uh, 60 people that it looks like there's a decent. Amount. I don't think it's quite 60, but. Um, for people that can't attend, space is limited, so we're trying this whole Google Hangout thing. Um, we're obviously running into network problems, so we'll hopefully get through that. But all right, so um, like I said, I'm Kyle Buchanan. I'm a, a front end developer at Blue Cross and Blue Shield, North Carolina. I've been there for three years. Um, I've only been developing with Angular for about seven months. So I am by no means an expert at this, but I have really enjoyed it. And I'm so happy about Angular that I wanted to talk about it. 
Um, and like I said, I'm one of the three organizers now for the Triangle JavaScript Meetup. And um, if you want to email me or get me on Google Plus, um, I'm going to put this presentation on our our newly minted GitHub page or um, repository. Um, so if you go to github.com slash triangle.js, you'll see we've got our first repository up there called booty.js. We can discuss that later. Um, or you can fork it and do whatever you want with it. It's really up to whatever this group wants to do. So I think the plan with the GitHub site is we're going to just start putting all of our presentations up there. Any example code that anybody wants to share, we can put it up on there. Or um, Yeah, I think... I think that's a good idea. And then we also have the Google Plus page, which I actually just started working on yesterday. So um, we'll have that. So there's going to be tons of different ways that you can interact with us and interact with everybody else in the group. So without further ado, so the plan for tonight is kind of to do an introduction to Angular. Um, I'm going to do some coding, and then I'm going to get into the part that I really like. And I've done this. This is my third time doing this presentation. So the first two times, I didn't really get to the Yeoman part. And I think that's the really cool part, the sweet spot with Angular uh, development. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll do some live coding. And the plan is, and we're not going to get there because I've tried it before and I've failed twice. Um, is to build something like this. Um, this was something that I built using Angular. Um, it took me about an hour. My wife designed it for me. So it took me 45 minutes to do CSS, and then it took me 15 minutes to hook up the JavaScript to full time movies down from the Rotten Tomatoes API, and it's got a nice, cool little uh, you know, CSS animations, that kind of thing. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's got some problems, spacing issues, but. I just thought it was cool that I was able to get something that looks kind of cool done in an hour. So I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but it sounds like I can. Anyway, so AngularJS. Who here has worked with Angular, knows about Angular? OK, about 25%, I guess. Um, for those of you that haven't played with Angular, I highly encourage it. Um, the way that, that Google sort of describes Angular is that it's sort of the next iteration of HTML. So if you were to, if they were to build HTML today, this is, I think, what they would like to propose as the solution for building, you know, JavaScript-heavy applications. Because static pages don't exist a whole lot anymore. If you're going to do anything with, um, you know, with mobile devices or iPads and desktops and all that stuff, I mean, you're you're going to end up using JavaScript at some point. So um, there's kind of four points that I, I think are key to Angular. And the first one uh, is, I think, has become the biggest time saver for us at Blue Cross. <laughs> it's actually cleared up a lot of um, confusion uh, around sort of the way I've been coding things. Uh, I, I'm coming from sort of a, back, a backbone JS, require JS. Um, I mean, that's kind of where I spent the last year. I loved it. I got pretty good at you know building up a uh, you know library of files, keeping everything really module, creating a build script, combining, uh, minifying all my code, and then I hand it over to our our support team, and they you know they wouldn't know <laughs> they have no clue what was going on. So one of the one of the major benefits that we've seen with with switching to Angular at Blue Cross is that our templates are now writing the code. So when you start looking at my HTML, you know you get a pretty good idea what, as to what's going on. You know what you know the controller is for this particular div, or you know what um, what why it should be hidden or why it should show. Um, so I, I, we've we found that to be a huge time saver for us. And then the other thing that sort of just blew my mind, and I'll demonstrate this here in a little bit, is the two-way data binding. So a lot of the other MVC libraries and frameworks that I've worked with have been you. Go get your data, put it as you know, get it as a JSON object. You push the JSON object to your HTML template, and then you have to render the template. Then you have to select where that HTML should go, and then you would push it there, and it shows up. With Angular, it just it's sort of they have this magic where you build your template right into your HTML, put your variable or your property name inside some double curly braces. Whatever that property is equal to is going to show up right there in the code. And then, if you wanted to modify that um, 
that value, you can do it within your HTML, and then your, your controller would know about it. So um, that's sort of the, I think, the magical area of AngularJS. And you'll, you'll hear me say magic a lot tonight. I don't understand most of what's going on with Angular. I've just accepted it and have worked with it. And it's made my life great, I'll say that. Um, and then, uh, so structure and testing, this is another big thing. Uh, when working with Angular and, and Yeoman in combination, um, what they do is they, it, when you work with those two pieces together, they structure your code the same way every time. So there's some generators that will generate a like a, a um, controllers file, and then it has a services or a, a controllers folder, and then a services folder, and a filters folder, and a, a directives folder, all this stuff. So every time you, you build an application using Yeoman, you're kind of looking at the same thing. Uh, I'll show you how, how that works later. And then the last thing is dependency injection. And dependency injection is really cool because as you're working with your controllers, hey Justice, that seems a lot. Um, when you're working with your controllers, um, sometimes you want to pass data between the two controllers. Well, Yeoman's got this really, or um, Angular's got this really cool thing where you can inject certain things into your controllers where they're all going to start sharing the same data. And once again, we'll see that in just a minute. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's. Let's just dive right in. Rather than me going through the documentation, I, I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through some of the some of these features that they've got within within Angular, and um, we'll hopefully revisit these slides here in a minute. But usually, I just kind of bring up my Sublime Text uh, code editor and, and start going. So, um, for those of you who haven't worked with with Angular, uh, there's a sort of a there's kind of a, a confusing nomenclature. Um, there are these things called directives. There are things called services, which when you think of services, you usually think of a web service, or if you, um, sometimes they call them factories. I mean, it really depends on where you're reading. And um, you know, the documentation, depending on whose code you're looking at, will use you know, one terminology versus the other. So um, directives are these, these things that you would add as, you can add them as attributes in your HTML. So, so for my first example here, um, there's a there's a directive called ng app, and these are it's just one of those things where I had to start just remembering. Okay, I'm going to build a, a, a Angular application. I need to use this ng app uh, directive. So you'll see that we'll, we'll we'll build a whole or we'll use a whole bunch of directives in here. So I'm going to create a new file. How about that? And if you guys haven't used um, Sublime Text 2 with the Emmet, I guess I need to say that with the Emmet plugin or the Zen coding plugin, it's definitely a uh, time saver. So I can, with, with the uh, Zen, Zen coding, I can just do the HTML and then, you know, it just kind of builds everything up for me. So I'll test the application. And I think the best place to get the, uh, the code for Angular is on the um, Google CDN. So I'll just grab that really quick. If I'm boring anybody, please let me know. And if you have any questions at any point, please let me know. It's just stop me. If you guys are upset that the Twitter Bootstrap version 3 is completely different, <laughs> I feel for you. I had a guy at work today who's, who went to look at the documentation for something, and he saw, he's like, what are all these new classes with the columns? I mean, what, what, what's going on with that? And I told him, just click that button to go back to the two, three, whatever docs. Anyway. OK, so I've got, um, let me make this bigger. Can you invert the colors? Sure. Does anybody know a good inverted? There you go. Is that better? Let's turn the word wrap on. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna build my first Angular application here for you guys. And as I showed you, there's this directive called ng app. So I'm going to go ahead and add this ng app directive into my body tag. Now, what's cool about Angular is that these uh, ng app 
directives can be added to any part of the page. So you can have a div that has an ng-app directive on it, or you can have, I mean, say you broke up your, your application into three sections where you had a, a comments application, then you had like a post application, and then you had like a uh, navigation application. So Google was thinking ahead, well, you know, if you want to just take any part of your code right now and, and make it an Angular application, you can just throw that ng-app directive on any part and add the library right away. You're smiling. Sounds okay. great. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to start using it now and all your other developers are you know, using jQuery and something else, you can you can just sneak this in there and they won't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm going to call this now playing because we're going to kind of rebuild now playing. So you pass ng-app a string. So uh, the directive is equal to whatever I wanted the application to be called. And I'm going to keep Script tag here. And I'm call my app. So okay, um, this is one of, I said sort of one of my complaints about Angular is that you just there's just certain I mean it's with any library, you just have to remember how the API works. You just need to remember what the methods are called and everything. So when you're creating a uh, when you're creating an application, they actually they use a module um, they use a module uh, method. And that module method, the first parameter that it receives is the is the name of the, of the string that's in your uh, ng app directive. And then it also receives a second parameter where you could, if you wanted to do, um, to inject any other modules as dependencies into this particular module, you could do that in the um, in this second parameter. And you'll see that most of the methods have a you know first parameter, which is the name of whatever it is that you're working with, and then the second parameter is any dependency that you'd like to inject into your into that particular piece of code. So I'm going to create I'm going to create this cool thing here called a controller, so we can start working with a block of code here. And here's another thing I want to mention is that the uh, Google is, is trying to push sort of um, standards with with how you work or how you how you name your your files and everything and name your controllers. One of the things that I've seen them pushing is that if you create a controller, add a capital C T R L at the end. And I think it's really just purely for the fact that on first glance, when you look at this code, you can see oh, we're looking at my controller here. Obviously, I mean it's pretty obvious, but when you've got hundreds of lines of code on here, it can probably get a little confusing. So but anyway, so what I've done is I've taken this angular.module and I've saved it to a variable. And what I can do is it's a lot like jQuery where you can chain methods. So I can take this angular.module and I can create a controller off of it. So I can do app.controller. Um, and then I'm going to, since I use the, uh, the string my controller, just like I did for ng-app, I'm going to pass in the same string that I was using. And then here's where you do your fancy injections. So I'm going to do something here, and I'll explain in a second. And just so this, we all know that this is running and I haven't broken anything, I'm just kind of curious myself to make sure I didn't do anything wrong. All right, no errors. We're in business. Okay, so I talked earlier about how cool Angular is and how you can inject your templates directly into your HTML. So I'm going to do that right away. I'm going to create this H1 that's going to say hello, and then we're going to pass in a username. So if you've worked with HTML or jQuery templates, underscore templates, handlebars, mustache, you name it, whatever they've got up there. Uh, they all have a certain sort of, you know, two or a tag that you can put your property within. The one that Angular chose is these double curly braces. Um, so yeah. Okay. So let me explain this. Controllers have their own scope, and if you've worked with uh, the, the keyword this before, you probably know what I'm talking about. So um, as you're working within functions, you know, they all kind of have their own their own scope. And 
when you when you create a controller, it automatically creates its own scope for you. So the way you can add properties to that particular controller is is when you pass in the when you re, when you inject the scope into this particular controller, you, you pass it into the callback function, and then it's available to me within my controller. So if I said scope that username equal to Kyle Buchanan, and then I run it, you can see that it just shows up. I didn't have to do anything with selecting this, this H1 tag. I didn't have to you know compile any JSON or or I guess you would compile JSON, but you would parse JSON and then pass it in. If you guys haven't seen this happen before with just you know a little bit of code, you should be amazed. I should say Jaws dropped right now. But um, you get all um, sorry. Uh, actually, I guess we just had a whole bunch of lines here at the bottom. Yeah. And one of the things that is um, kind of difficult with Angular is that. The setup, this is actually, this is kind of funny. I, I did this presentation for my wife um, a couple of weeks ago. She actually sat through an hour and 45 minutes of this with me. Um, and at the very end, the comment was, well, it looks like there's an awful lot of initial setup at the beginning. But you'll see that, yeah, OK, it was a little bit. And there's a little bit that you have to remember. You can find this all in the documentation. Just you'll, It'll become second nature to you. Um, <laughs> once you get over this first little hump, the rest is super easy. I mean, it, we just can we can do some really cool things here. So, um, one of the other uh, sort of um, one of the other directives that they've got is this this one called ng repeat. And so, if you've ever had, I mean, typically the way that I work at Blue Cross is we go get data, we display data, we get arrays of data, we display it. So, this is this presentation sort of geared toward uh, Blue Cross and the fact and the way that we work, but um, the ng repeat directive is something that makes iterating over a data set really easy. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'll just create a sample array of data, and then we'll iterate over it. So libraries. So I'm going to do an array of my favorite libraries here. Lake County. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, jQuery. Uh, backbone. I'm going to throw, I haven't done this one before, but I think I'm going to throw new tools in there, because that was my first JavaScript library. All right, so I've got this, uh, this new property available on my scope, and it's called libraries. And if I wanted to put these down as, a, um, as an unordered list, that would be really simple and angular. So uh, the uh, the one the element that I'd like to repeat is this li. So I'm going to hopefully create four um, list items here. And if you've worked with for loops before, you, you know that um, with for loops you would create a sort of a temporary var variable, and then um, you can use that temporary var variable through each iteration of the loop. So um, hopefully this looks somewhat familiar to people, but. Does that, I mean, that makes sense to everyone, library and libraries? So as we loop through, as, as we do each iteration through this uh, data set, my temporary variable becomes library. So if you wanted to see what what is at that particular index for that, uh, that loop, I would just add in library. So let's run this. And so just in, by adding an array, just a tiny bit of HTML, I'm, displaying data. Um, so, so far, what this has been is it's been one-way data binding. I, I talked earlier how the, probably one of the biggest and most powerful features of, of Angular is the fact that it's two-way data binding. And so let's, let's, let's see how that works. Um, let's create an input here. And this is, this is where I bombed last time. I tried to input type text, and something just did not work for me. But someone was telling me that I needed this last uh, slash, but I'm pretty sure you don't. I, 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 am I wrong? Do you, you don't need that slash, right? Because last time I did this, I didn't have the slash, and it ended up becoming some like disabled input field. Anyway, 
Don't need it for HTML5. Right, that's what I thought. All right, so we've got, what, I, what I've done is I've added this uh, directive, this new directive. There's just a whole bunch of directives. If you go look at the Angular documentation, there's just this gigantic list of directives. There's things from ng click, ng mouse over, ng mouse out, um, ng show, ng hide, um, ng resource. I think that's actually a resource, but um, Anyway, you just, just take a look at the documentation. You can see the, the different things. So I'm just touching on a few today just to show you, hopefully get you excited about Angular and see how easy it is to use. Um, so what I've done is I've added this new directive out here called ng-model. And what ng-model does is it tries to find whatever I pass in, into the ng-model, it's going to try to find that particular variable on my scope. If that scope or if that variable doesn't exist or that property doesn't exist on my scope already, it'll create it for me. So if I were to run this right now with, if down here at the bottom you can see um, I already have the username property set. When we run this, we should see in the input field, we should see my name pre-populated. Let's, let's hope so. And there it is. <coughs> and so this, this part kind of blew my mind the first time I did this. Since the input field is, is wired up to the username property on my scope, and hello Kyle Buchanan, the Kyle Buchanan part is also wired up to the username. As I start editing this input field, you can see it starts modifying that property on, in the H1. So. And that, I, I think that's pretty cool, pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, come on. Give the guys a hand for that. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and now I want to do one more directive. I'll show you guys one more directive, and then we'll kind of get back into um, sort of the discussion I've got here. Um, there's another one that I use a lot called uh, ng-click, and you can, you can probably guess what ng-click is going to do. Um, but here comes my first gripe about Angular. Um, I, when I first started using Angular, I had this huge problem with adding all of these like click attributes and mouse over attributes. Um, I thought we got away from that. And I guess the, the way that the guys at Google have sort of described this is that OK, you're not adding on click in there, so it's not that bad. The problem with on click is typically you're calling global functions. And um, I mean, that's anytime you go back and you look at code from the early 2000s, and no offense to anybody who's still using on click, or I know sometimes you have to use it for analytics because those analytics libraries don't, are not up to date. But um, I, di I didn't like that. But the, the, the way Google said, to, or said that you know, this kind of makes sense now is that, well, since you're within your controller, that's it's been scoped to that particular controller. So ng click, whatever whatever method that I pass into the the um, quotations there, that that function is only going to be available in that controller. So it's it's just a way to sort of like you know encapsulate or modularize your code. So um, I'm going to add a function here called do something. Actually, I'm going to call a method called do something. And on my scope, I'll do this here at the top. And I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to put a letter in there. <laughs> I should probably, I shouldn't even do console log. I should put a breakpoint in my code and, and check to see that it's sitting there. So anyway, um, by having ng-click on, on this particular button, it's going to call this method do something, and it should alert hello. So when I click me, hello. Pretty simple stuff. And I mean, you can even do things like within, when, when you call uh, scope.do something, like it says scope.username equal to um, I love uh, pizza, which is going to be crazy because it's going to update my username and oh, it didn't work. There it is. And it's refresh. I don't know why you would do that, but you could if you wanted to. 
All right, any questions so far? Am I going too fast, too slow? Yeah? You just did a, an assignment to, to use a name rather than like a method call. How is it? Do you get a bullet to wire that in? Or how does it respond to This is the magic part. Angular magic. <laughs> uh, there's no polling going on. Um, maybe there is. I don't know. Do you know? It's a, they call it dirty checking on there. Is the method that they use to kind of pull the DOM, I guess, for changes. Okay, there's, so there's a no, there's whole blog post that you can read about why that's an okay way to do dirty it. checking. Dirty checking. Dirty checking. I'll, I will Google that later because I think it renders <laughs> the entire block. The entire controller gets re rendered in the DOM. I guess we could look at that in the in yeah, I, I think it has a data binding to that. So that's what Angular says is doing. I forget where I do this. Do I do this within if I want to see what's painting and what's taken forever, I'm pretty sure I can do it here. And uh, there's a guy. There's a guy I work with named Luke who knows how to do all this stuff. He always tells me what's running slow on my pages, so. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty much everything because we work at an insurance giant, and it's 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 painful, but I love it. Sorry, sorry for anyone. Sorry, sorry to anyone. But I think David Ross from Blue Cross is hopefully watching right now. So hi, David. Stop working. Is he actually is probably still working. Right All right, so let's get back to what I was talking about. But I think, well, grab a sticker. Oh, did you already, already, did you go? Okay. All right, I want to make sure that I caught all these things. So we did um, ng app. And yeah, if you want to, I guess this is a bunch of fun. Um, if you want to be safe, wrapping your, your uh, methods in these immediately invoke function expressions is a good way. Um, you know, this passes J, well, it would pass JS link if I put the comment for um, Angular being global. But um, this is kind of how I work. Uh, the way that the guys at Google show all of their uh, examples is that they just, they kind of just create the code without sort of uh, encapsulating it. Um, I think it's purely for the purposes of, of example just to get the idea across. Um, you can you can be much more anal with your code, kind of like me. I've had to actually relax a little bit because I got a little um, out of control. Um, yeah. So we created a controller, uh, created a template. This doesn't apply, this doesn't apply. We did looping. I thought looping was pretty cool. Oh, service. So this is a this is a a huge piece of Angular creating services. So when you think of a service, like me, I always think of a web service. I'm going to make an H, some HTTP call. I'm going to use jQuery.ajax and go get something. Uh, the way Google or Angular sort of uses um, services is when your application runs and this service is actually injected into a controller, it creates a singleton. And I think you might know more about this than I do since you did the whole dirty, <laughs> dirty check comment. Um, if at any point, if I say something that's even slightly wrong, correct me because, like I said, I've only been doing this for a few months, so this is kind of all, all you know, just what I know at this point. But um, so with with services in Angular, it's like I said, when the application runs, it will create this singleton object that is then that then becomes um, accessible to any part of your application that you inject this particular service. Into. So if I've got a controller and I've got this now playing service and I want the data that's on that now playing service to be injected into that controller, I just I just throw it in as a dependency and then I've got the data. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll build one of these real quick. And this is a, one of those things that I was mentioning about nomenclature. They call it a service, but the method is factory. Um, I, I don't know why. But, so I'm going to create this new thing here called a service. So app.factory. And I need to move this up to the top, sorry. And then we can pass in any um, dependencies that we need. I'm not going to do anything right now. Um, 
I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is show you that it, it does kind of work. Is I'll create a new, I'll create this now playing service that's going to return the same sort of array of libraries so you can see that instead of having the libraries on the particular scope in the controller, I can inject it using this controller. So I'm going to return, um, let's see, libraries. And then we'll add some new ones in here. Uh, scriptaculus. Uh, any uh, prototype? Prototype. Uh, Ember. It's a good one. I actually haven't used it. Um, then there's that giant, giant one. Uh, EJS. I think you yeah, that is Oh, EXTJS. I think that's the. Okay, so I've created this, this factory, and to inject this factory into my controller, it's pretty simple. So I just grab the name of this particular service slash factory, and then create a little space here so you can see this. So far in my controller, I've injected the scope. Um, I think you'll pretty much find yourself always injecting scope. Maybe not always, but 95% of the time injecting scope into your, into your controllers. And then if you've used require before, this should be somewhat familiar. You've got this array that has all these things that you want to pass in. So I'll just add a ne the next piece in that I want to add. It's just the string with another comma. And for that to become available in my callback function, I then need to add it as the second parameter of my callback function. So this is kind of important. For the number of items that you're injecting, if you want to actually access them within your controller, you also need to pass them into your callback. Um, if you say you were to have another service in here that you're not actually using, um, if I tried to if I tried to access that right here, if I wanted whatever that whatever this third parameter is or this third um, argument or actually third item in the array. If I wanted to access, access it, I couldn't do it this way. I'd have to then pass in now playing service before it. Does that make sense to everyone? No? OK. OK, so now I've got this now playing service. And I'm going to set my libraries. Instead of being equal to that array, I'm going to set it to the now playing service dot libraries. And barring any mistake, coding mistake, fat finger. All right, that worked. And just to show you how these are injectable, if I created another, I'll just quickly create another controller. And then we'll, we'll, we'll introduce something else pretty soon here. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm sorry, I get really excited about this stuff. And you're lucky I didn't play Decimate the Week before we started. That's kind of my coding song. Uh, gets me pumped, too. I don't want to, you've heard the thing, the bro grammar. Have you guys heard that? Let's, let's uh, bro down and crush some code. Sadly, I'm kind of like that, but um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's just, we'll, we'll iterate over this list again. But we'll, we'll, we'll add a filter to it so we can sort of display it a little bit differently. And this is a lot of coding on the fly here. And then remember I called that second controller. In my ng controller, it was the string second controller, so I'll use it again. Pass in scope as a dependency, my now playing service as a dependency, my callback function that passes both scope and the now playing service in. And then if I do scope.libraries, to now playing service.libraries, see now that I've got two different controllers that are sharing the same data, and all I have to do is inject it into the second controller and wire it up. So that's, I think that's that's pretty powerful. One example that I'm using this for is I've built this, um, actually I can show you. I don't think anybody at 
Blue Cross is going to get too angry with me right now. Um, so this is something that, that I've built. I haven't actually released it in production yet. It's on ChristianCow.com. It's kind of a funny site. Um, it used to be fun, but not anymore. Um, but so what I, what I did is I had this. There's a JSON file that sort of manages this whole thing. So this JSON file had is this gigantic array of all the urgent care centers that are located in North Carolina, at least the ones we know of. Um, and so I've got this. I've got a list controller on the left, and I've got a map controller on the right, and both are just sharing the same data. So you can see how by you know sharing the same data, you can represent the data in two different ways. So I'm re representing it as text and and information on the left, and then on the right, I'm using that same service and, and, uh, and displaying it as, as markers that then can use the same, you know, this, it's, it's just pulling the exact same data. I, I thought that was, it was pretty cool that we could just kind of share the data that way. There's a lot of different ways to share data, whether it be global objects or, you know, you pass global events or any sort of event. Um, I just, I really, I really enjoy the way Angular works where you can just create this, this one service, which most of the time you're going to take that service and it's going to be its own file. And then you can then share that service with all the other applications that you're building. Another example is that I've got is, um, we've got a zip code service at Blue Cross. The zip codes are pretty important for us because um, North Carolina, is, the way North Carolina is set up is that, you know, there's a lot of rural, rural areas. So with, within North Carolina, your zip code is going to, actually it plays into your, into your rate because of how close care is to your location. So by using this zip code service within our different applications, um, we just, we share it with, it's just this one file that lives and you do, we just inject it into all of our different Angular applications. All right. Um, yeah. Um, I want to make sure I understand what scope is. That's specific to this instance of an app. Yeah. So the app shares scope with itself. There's a root scope. So every application has a root scope. So if you want to, there's there's inheritance with, with scopes. So you, when you build your application, there's a variable or there's a front, there's a, a, an object called root scope. And off of that root scope, everything else is built. So, um, with your you have your ng application, and then you have your controller. So your controller has your first controller or whatever I created here. My controller has access to root scope. So then, any controller that I build within that controller, they all sort of inherit the properties of the previous controller. And then you can get down to the bottom, and you can start modifying the controllers at that at that particular controller level, or you can work backwards and start merit, uh, uh, editing parent controller or parent scopes, and then all the way up to the root scope. So um, I found I've been using root scope for a couple of global things. Um, I hope that explains somewhat, but yeah, but, yeah it's just the name, the name dollar scope is to be determined by doing right? Yeah. So scope is let's actually let's let's make sure we hit this one right here. Scope is a type, whatever that means. Um, it's a type and module ng. So I don't know what that really means, but I guess I'll let you guys. <laughs> Figure that out. Um, there are a couple other types. There's the module. There's this attributes. There's a form controller and an ng model controller. I don't know. I mean, I I use them, but I don't. I guess I don't, like I said, I'm pretty new to this, so I don't realize I'm using it. So I guess that'd be for another another talk. All right. So we created a service. We injected the service into our controller. We already did this one interactivity. Um, let's let's touch on this one. Let's add some interactivity to the actual service. So within this, if you remember, I've got this button that says "Click Me." If I wanted to update the, the service, and you can see the 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 um, data actually update on both controllers. 
So instead of working with scope.username, what I'm going to do is maybe we'll choose do not find service.libraries. Let's grab the third one. Set that equal to, we'll go with booty.js. So once again, just real real simple stuff, how to update data on a service. And it's really just dot notation, changing the, changing the, uh, the property to whatever you want. If you want, uh, instead of changing an existing. Uh, you want to add a new one? Right. It's like we're working together. Like you. <laughs> um, we'll do booty touch, yes. Okay. So when I click me, I've added it to both. Why are you doing that? <laughs> so the, the quick story about, OK, you got a question. Um, Along those same lines, if you're, would you use your service like as you have it now? Right now, you've got just static data in it. Um, I assume that that would be the place that you would stack your AJAX call to some external API. Yeah. Uh, do you normally find yourself caching that result, or is that a, is that something that would be a, a a good practice to say, hey, go get this. If it's not here, go get it. If it is here, use what we Yeah, I've, I've done that with um, with uh, another thing that I was working on where I would then, I would I would store, I'd go get the data, and then I'd put it in a local storage. And then I would, it would be kept in memory at first, but then the second time the application runs, check local storage first. If it's not there, then go get it, and then store it in memory, update the local storage. Um, that's kind of the way I've been doing it. Um, yeah, the fewer round trips that you need to make, the better. Right. And, well, it depends on your data, how if it can be stacked. Urgent care centers, um, they don't update that often. Sure. Um, although FastMed is popping up like crazy all over the place. But if you're um, talking about going out to a hotel room um, availability service, yeah, you're probably not going to want to cache that. You're not going to cache that, but you might cache the hotels in a 10 mile radius of an address. Because that's not going to change while you're right. It's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah, and then one of the other things that um, I guess I really didn't touch on is the fact that you can you can watch any property on like you can watch uh, service properties. You can watch other properties within your scope. And by watching, you can check to see when that property has changed. And there's a there's a function that you there's a function called watch that you can use where if um, if my username changed and I was watching that particular variable, it would show me what the old value was, what the new value is, and you can do whatever sort of operation that you need to do at that point. Um, watching is really helpful in services when you're calling when you're calling a, a web service because it's it is done asynchronously. So on services, a good idea or something that I've been doing is that. I'll just, I'm, within my controller, I'll put a watch on that particular property in my service. So when that service has that property built, when there's something there, it'll update me and say, hey, I have something now. Here's what it was previously. Here's what it is now. Do you want to do anything? So um, watch is, is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool function. I mean, I can show watch. Well, let's let's we'll do that later. <laughs> I want to get to Yeoman. I really want to get to Yeoman. <clears throat> okay, and this was this is kind of where I started the, the 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 first time I did this presentation. This is kind of where I started, where I had all of these complaints. Like I said, I was coming from a backbone required sort of uh, background, and I, I kept thinking to myself, "Gosh, I just got really good with backbone, or at least decent." I guess. I guess. Um, I got decent with the backbone I require. I really don't want to check out the this Angular, you know, the new kid on the block. And then, so this was, um, I guess, sort of my this stream of thought as I was looking at the as, as I was looking at um, this particular framework. So you you probably will run into a lot of the same things that that I've run into here, where there is a bit of a steep learning curve. The documentation isn't very good yet. It's getting better. 
Um, there's a lot of people that are actually adding comments to the documentation that are further clarifying it. And the guys from Google are great at if you post something to a Google group or to the AngularJS community on Google Plus, they will get back to you right away. Um, they're they're very they're very aware that people are are you know using this and they want to they want to get better at it. Uh, the custom attribute custom attributes with functions and strings like we covered earlier with the ng click kind of like on click I, I didn't like that and then we covered the two way data binding and then how we're going to get past data around the application so the way I usually do this is I put this up front and then I go and and show all of the reasons why. Angular is, is actually an OK um, framework in my book. But um, yeah, so we're, we're actually just going to skip through a lot of this stuff. Because I want to get to Yeoman. And we've already been going for 15 minutes. Does anybody want to take a break, or, like get more pizza, or stand up? No? Just plow through? OK. Oh, I didn't cover filters. Let me do one last thing with filters. So. Um, I, was, I, I actually forgot to do this. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you with, with these templates is that, so I've got these two controllers right here that are doing pretty much the same thing. They're iterating over this list of libraries. Um, Angular provides a lot of filters out of the box. They provide like an uppercase filter, a lowercase filter, a date filter, a currency filter. So if you're trying to manipulate a string of text, you can use one of the provided Angular filters, or you can build your own. You can build any number of filters. Um, one filter I built for the um, urgent care center thing that I just showed you was the, the phone number a phone number filter. So when I get the data back from my service, it's nicely formatted with you know parentheses, nine one nine space one two three hyphen four five six seven. That doesn't work if you're trying to apply that to a button. So that actually, or to a, a, uh, an anchor tag that's actually going to call, call that place on a, on a mobile device. So the protocol for the anchor tag is TEL colon slash slash and then just, just the numbers. So I created a filter that just strips out all of that extra stuff and just gives the wrong number. So let's, let's just, we'll use, a, we'll, we'll use a filter really quick. So we'll just do the, um, we'll do the uppercase filter. And so within your template, if you want to apply a filter, all you have to do is add, the, add this pipe and then the name of the filter. And there just happens to be an Angular filter called uppercase. And when I save it and I run it, you'll never guess what happens. The second controller where I apply the filter, they're all uppercase. And then if, this, if these were, let's say that my libraries, I'm just going to change this real quick. Let's say this was. Five and two, three, and then thirty. Let's say I wanted those to show up as, as dollar amounts. I could apply the currency filter. And it's going to do some nice, cool things for me where it adds the dollar sign in front and puts it out to two decimal places. So if I passed, like I passed in the number thirty, it went ahead and just dollar sign two decimal places after two zeros. Once again, I think pretty cool stuff. And it, it, there's some internationalization too that's available. Can you filter to take arguments too? Yes. So um, the, a good example of that is the date filter. And we'll take a look at that in the documentation real quick. The date filter, you can pass, you can say you want to use the date filter, but then you can tell what kind of format you want to use. Do you want to use you know, year, space, day, or month, day. I'll just show you that real quick. Filters. So you can see here, they've got, there's a currency date filter, there's a JSON, limit to, lowercase, number, order by. Order by is actually really cool if you're trying to order um, tables. So here's date. The way you would use date is, so you've got, whatever your variable is. And then you would say, I want to use the date filter. And then you, you would say what the format is. And it's expecting a, a string as the format. So you can use one of these predefined ones, like medium, short, full date, which will spit it out in you know, whatever this example is. 
And like I said, there's also localizable formats. And then someone actually just released something for Angular that does um, plural, plural, pluralization. Um, so if you're anybody needing to do any sort of like international type stuff, um, somebody's already solved it for you, so you can just use whatever they built. Justice, yeah. So this is different from what I would have thought when I saw the word filter. Is yeah. Is there anything in this that will allow you to constrain the results that are actually used to your code? Or do you need to do that? Say that again. If I wanted to constrain the results of the iterator, iterator is there a So let's say you have, you have five items in the array and you say just show the first three? Right. Or do I need to do this in the service? Um, you can do it. I, I, it's funny that you asked this question. I just did this two nights ago, um, working on a reservation thing for my son's birthday party. And um, there isn't a, you would probably be better off in, in just saying use the first, like within your service, just use the first three. Just um, I think you would slice the first three um, and use that. That's one thing I think they're sort of lacking right now is a, is a, a, a um, ng repeat limit which would be really nice. Um, they don't have that just yet. So you, you'd have to build it on your own. Any other questions? Yeah, filter, once again, one of those things where it's like, why did you call it filter? Just kind of get used to it, I guess. Um, Can we look at limit two? Yeah, look at limit two, because I think that does what you're expecting. See, I don't see a repeat in here. You know, I don't see the ng repeat directive. I've used it on repeat. Really? Yeah. One into three. Maybe this is uh, maybe this is new because I've been using 1.05. This is 1.0.6. Well, I've used 1.0.5, so maybe this is new. This is good to know. Oh, and the other thing that I, I sort of failed to mention is that, so you can use these filters within your templates, but then you can also use these filters within your code. You would just, um, you'd have to sort of invoke it in a different way. Um, it's kind of nice within your template because you can just put the pipe in the name of the filter. If you were to use this within your code, like if I wanted to run, um, if I wanted to run uppercase on my libraries or something like that, what you'd have to do is you'd have to pass in the filter I don't know, is this a service? I don't know, but you have to say you want to use filter. And then you would run filter, the name of the filter that you want to use. And then as the second, um, I guess it's, used, it's saying that it's using the, the filter method. And then I don't think you're chaining this. I'm not exactly sure what this is doing. But then you would pass in um, the dollar amount. And I, I feel like. I feel horrible because I'm showing how, how little I actually know about this, but um, that's that's how you would filter in your code. If you wanted to do that before you actually spit it out to your HTML. Okay, moving on. Let's undo that instead of like that. Okay, maybe we'll finally get to Yeoman. I think we should just skip the rest. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip ng show and ng hide. I think those pretty much describe what they do. Either show or hide something, true or false. You can actually run methods that return true or false. Um, yeah. And then there's some, OK, ng hide. OK, so real quick, before we get into Yeoman, there's some great resources out there. Angular JS documentation, I, I think, is the first place to go if you have any questions or if you're trying to learn this. Um, the second place I would go is egghead.io. So I don't know if you guys know who John Lindquist is, but he's, um, I started following him back in uh, his ActionScript days. And then he just sort of, maybe he saw the writing on the wall with Flash, that Flash really isn't, you know, no offense to Flash developers or ActionScript guys, but I don't think it's going to stick around too much longer. But um, so he made a series of, of videos that are like five minutes a piece. And, they run through everything. So he's got all of these, let's see here, 
He's got 46 videos on the different on, on different topics, and they're all like five minutes long. So I find myself watching these like four or five of them before I go to sleep or something like that. Watch them all. There's a uh, Angular JS ebook that's I don't know if it's supposed to be free, but I found a link that has the PDF copy of it. Um, I think it's selling for like nine dollars on Amazon right now. But this link that I put in this presentation takes you to free download IT ebooks. I don't know if I should be showing this. I don't know if um, Brad Green is going to be upset with me for that. And then AngularJS on, um, on Google Plus, the community is extremely active. They're constantly showing, or they're, they're, people are posting, well, I created this new filter. I created this new directive. Um, there are all kinds of directives out there. I didn't really cover uh, directives as HTML or, or creating, um, you creating your own custom HTML tags using directives. You can do that, and there's a lot of people that are, that are out there doing that on GitHub, and they post all this stuff to to the Google Plus community. Okay, where will you put this presentation? I think I'm going to put it on the GitHub um, on the Triangle uh, JS GitHub page. I hope I'll do. I'll try to do that tonight, or I can email it to you, or whatever. All right, we already coded something. So, all right, Yeoman. This is this. Yeoman has made my life incredibly easy. Um, I'm working on this crazy new uh, rate quote application for Blue Cross. So, as many of you are aware, in on October 1st, all of these exchanges are going to open up, and everybody's going to be required to buy health insurance or pay a penalty if you don't already have it. Um, so we took this as an opportunity to rebuild our rate quote application because um, we need to now target uh, phones, tablets, uh, desktops, you name it, whatever you want to look at rate quote on, we're trying to make it possible using responsive design and all that stuff. But what has made my life really easy with this is, is Yeoman. So just, um, just for an example, I've had, let's see, I've got... Um, I've got an iPhone 5, an iPhone 4, a Kindle Fire, a um, Galaxy, no, I have a Acer or an Asus Transformer E-Pad, um, iPad Mini, a Galaxy Nexus, or a, yeah, is that one? They're all Galaxy whatever, Samsung phone, a nice Google phone. Um, so I've got all these things sitting out on my desk, and as I'm working using Yeoman, um, Yeoman's got this really cool feature where it'll update as you as you save your file, it'll go and update all those devices at the same time as you're as long as you're all on the same network, pointing to the same web page. It, it's it's just made my life a lot easier. And that's just one little piece of Yeoman. So all right, let's 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 talk about what Yeoman is. So Yeoman, uh, if you used it prior to 1.0. You would have known that Yeoman is, is one application. Well, when they got to the, the uh, 1.0, they decided, well, what we should really do is that these other two guys over here, Grunt and Bauer, um, I know Bauer is made by Twitter. Grunt is it also made by the guys at Twitter. I don't know. But um, they, they all do very different things. Instead of Yeoman saying, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these other two applications and or these two other sort of services and, and bundle them. They said, well, you know, those things do really well at what they're doing, so why don't you just use them as they were intended to be used? Um, we'll just Yeoman will just kind of work with them. So um, so Yeoman is this way to sort of like, I guess sort of scaffold out applications. It can create files for you, it can create folders, it can do all kinds of cool things. So, um, Grunt is a really cool uh, tool. So you can use Grunt to uh, minify, concatenate your code. You can run these build scripts. Um, you can use Grunt to do live reloading on your page. And then Bower is used for any sort of um, dependencies that you want to pull down. So let's say you want to grab the latest version of jQuery, the latest version of underscore or Angular, or any, any name any library, um, or like even Bootstrap SAS. You want to pull that down. You can use Bower to do that. So like I said, rather than Yeoman trying to, like it previously did, try to do all this for you, now you would use each of these applications to do its own little thing, but they, they all just kind of work together. Has anyone used Yeoman? OK. 
Okay, yeah, handful. You guys are be you, you're going to go home and you're going to be like, man, I'm installing this tonight. I'm going to run this. Uh, well, the problem is you might run into some installation problems, <laughs> depending on how your permissions are set up on your computer. Um, I ran into, into these problems, but um, the best thing to do is just to install this globally. So you would do um, you'd have to have Node. Um, node and Git, and then optionally Ruby and Compass if you plan to use uh, Compass. But from the from your command line, you would just use the Node Package Manager, and you would run the install command with the G flag for global, and then you want yo, which is short for yeoman. Um, I would have done this here tonight, but the uh, unfortunately the GitHub protocol is blocked, so um, you guys would have seen you would have seen. Uh, fall flat on my face. Um, so the other thing with Yeoman is they've got, there's, a, there's people out there that are working on these generators. So if you've got a popular library that you've been using, there's probably a pretty good chance that somebody out there has created a, a generator that works with Yeoman. So the guys at, at Angular went ahead and built the Angular generator. So um, if you wanted to get the Angular generator installed, you would run this, this uh, NPM command saying I want the generator hyphen angular. And then, then comes the fun part. So you say yo angular in your command line. And then it goes out and it, it'll build you an angular application. So I'm sorry, I, I don't know how the, because if I increase the fun on this, it, it's, it's, I'm using the Google slide template, the HTML5, like Google slides, and I'm finding a, that it's got one flaw. But it looks cool, I think. Okay, so a couple other notes, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start building a, a Yeoman application here. But um, so with, with with Yeoman, you would say uh, Yo Angular. How about let's let's create a route. I've got a single page application. I want to create a new route, and I want that route to be called User. So what uh, what Yeoman will do is it will use the Angular generator, and it will go ahead and um, it'll create a controller called user.js within this controllers directory. You know, we'll go ahead and use, you know, it'll sort of scaffold it out for you. So all you have to do is really, you know, that messy part I showed you at the beginning where you have to do angular.module, application name, dot controller, controller name. Well, the Yeoman uh, generator, what it does is it goes ahead and grabs all of those things for you. So I, let's say I've got a folder in my, um, in my, the directory I'm working in is called my app. It would use that as the application name, and then it would create the, because I called the route user, it would do what Google wants you to do with CTRL. Yeah. Is it cold in here? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so I created a, a, a controller's directory. It created a user.js file. And then it even created a, um, it created a view for me. So this is for a single page application. So it created a directory called views, and then it created the user.html file, and then went ahead and, and just pre-populated. This is my, my route view. And then I've got a couple other goodies on there. So you'd have to go, you know, to create these files. Well, then you're thinking, well, now I need to go to my index file, and I need to add all of these new script tags to my index file. Well, Yoma does that for you. So it'll just append those to the end of your file. Um, so in this case, it would have added my user.js uh, file to the end. And then I've got one thing I didn't cover was a, a, a way to use a, create a router, but it would it would then go ahead and add the route to this router that I've already created. So it just one simple command does all this work for me really quickly, and then it would even automatically update my page. So let's go ahead. Let's as I said, now we can be dangerous. All right, we're. Last time I attempted to recreate another application, but I'm not going to do that this time. Okay, so before before we get going today, I went ahead and created this new directory called Now Playing. Um, the reason I keep using Now Playing is because of that thing I showed you at the beginning with the different movies. I just kind of like it. Um, so if I did Yo Angular, this is the result. What you're seeing right here is. I went ahead and it created an app directory for me. It's got this bower.json file, a run file. It's got this uh, karma, I think it's end-to-end, -end, so that stands for E2E. Um, 
and the Karma configuration. It, any sort of node module I, I needed, they went ahead and grabbed that for me. Um, package.json, anybody who's worked with Node before should be familiar with the package.json for in installing uh, whatever is dependent or whatever your dependencies are in Node. And then I created this test directory. One thing that's, um, you know, they, they really, the guys at Angular really encourage you to write test scripts. And, you know, for me, that's a, actually, I don't even write test scripts. I, know that I should. And I, the majority of it, I, we all should be writing test scripts. Um, but if you use Yeoman, it kind of forces you to write test scripts. Actually, it doesn't even force you to write test scripts. It writes them for you. So if I created a new route or a new controller, it would then go and create the, the test controller file that, that I would need to, that if I wanted to you know, test my code, that it would, it would run that. Um, so yeah, this is all the stuff that it downloaded. Um, in my app directory, I have it created a 404 file for me. It created this, you know, some people call it fav icon, they call it fab icon. No, I actually call it fav icon. Uh, index file, a robots file, a scripts directory, a styles directory, and then my views directory. So just by typing yo angular, it went and did all of this for me in a matter of seconds. Um, I really wish I could have shown you that, because that would have been really cool. But um, so I'm going to run this command here. So let me clear this and get to the top. I'll make this larger so you guys can see it back. So I'm in my now playing directory. And just to show you that I am there and that, so you can see all the files in there. So if I were to use grunt to say I want to start up a server for this particular application, I could just run grunt server. And when I enter this command, it'll, it'll fire up um, I actually I don't even know what it's doing, but it'll open a new tab for me, and it's got live reload working for me. And so if I go into my application, and I'll sort of shrink this down so you can. <laughs> so much of this presentation is me. I don't even know what's going on. It just <laughs> works. All right. So here we'll do this side by side so you can see this. I'm going to go into my app directory in my views directory. So I've got this, can't really see this that well, but um, maybe I could go this way. I'm put this here, right here. So you can see right here, uh, um, this is the particular view that my route has called. Um, you can see that my hash has changed. I'm using this particular route. But um, since I've got uh, Yeoman working and the grunt server running, if I were to change this to is save. It just, you know, it just reloaded for me. A lot of people have worked with a lot of reloading before, but in the context of you know, using it with Yeoman, I just, it's all nice and neat and bundled for you. So just install Yeoman and you're on the way. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create a new, a new page here. And I want to show you real quick what um, sort of how this is all running. So I've got this, Yeoman created this app JS file for me, and I went ahead and created this thing called a route provider. And anybody who's worked with single page applications or used something like Sammy JS or anything like that, um, this is all pretty familiar stuff. Where it's trying to see what your route is, and based on that, what controller should I use and what view should I use with it. So um, in this particular case, if I hit the the root of this, it's going to use the views main.html as my template, and my main controller as a controller. And then it's got this nice little block here at the, at the end. So if I were to type in some gobbledygook, it would automatically, and it didn't have a route that matched, it would automatically route me to the beginning. So um, let's go ahead and we'll create a new route. How about that? I want to create a new route called, I guess, you know, I've kind of been going with the theme of, of libraries. So we'll go with, I should do this on the line so you can kind of see it. A little angular. I'm going to create a route. I'm going to call this libraries. And then another another quick point is if you uh, this code right now is not what they call min safe. So if you were trying to run the run build on this, um, there's a there's a good opportunity for a um, an error when you actually run it on your server. But um, so I'm going to add this flag here on the end called min safe. And all of this stuff's in the documentation. So I'm going to say, hey, yo, Angular, let's create a route and we'll call it libraries. 
So you can see right here, what, it, what it's done is it's created the libraries.js controller. It created the test file for libraries.js. It then went into my route and updated my route. And then on my, uh, it created my view. So all kinds of good stuff. Now, if you were to look at my HTML file, oh, actually, you can already see that. So I added my libraries uh, route in there, the template URL, the controller name. If you looked at my index.html file, you can see down here at the bottom, um, it went ahead at the very bottom. It, sorry, I'll move this up. It went ahead and added the libraries.js uh, controller at the bottom. So once again, just lots of really cool stuff done for me on the fly. So let's go ahead and we'll create a link. And we'll go to uh, libraries. And I refresh, or I don't need to refresh it. Refresh it for me. I click the link, go to libraries, and then it, you know, it's already done all that work for me. So you can do any any sort of, I guess any sort of, I don't know if you want to call it top level thing, but I, the there's a whole list of generators that you can do. So you can use the the Yeoman generator, the, the Angular generator to create filters, to create directives, to create services, um, routes, controllers, views. You know, just it'll all the stuff that you would have needed to do, all the grunt work that you would have needed to do with going and actually creating the file and, and then adding it to you know the proper directory and all this other stuff. It kind of just makes it so you can focus on your development rather than worrying about all of that administrative work. So um, I I found Angular to be awesome to work with, or Yeoman and Angular awesome to work with, and then um, it's just really sped things up for me. If Anybody wants to install? We actually we can't install it tonight because we can't get it from here. But um, there's one other thing I wanted to cover. GitHub provides SSL URLs for open reports. Just in your Git form, you copy the HTTPS version instead of the SSL. I'm trying to think how you do that within Yeoman because Yeoman always hits. You just say yo Angular, and then it goes and does all that stuff for you. So maybe there's a way to append an S to the HTTP in there. But um, well, let me show you the last the last kind of cool thing. And, um, so I work. I've been working on rate quote, um, what we call rate quote, so you can get a quote on Blue Cross insurance. The the number of scripts has become you know pretty numerous. We've got this gigantic block of scripts at the end. Um, instead of, you know, when I modify all those files, instead of having to say, okay, which ones did I modify? Okay, well, now I need to copy these, copy these from my local up to my server, and then I need to go publish these. Uh, Yeoman's got this, or Grunt actually has got this nice uh, command called build. So now that I'm done working with my application, I need to actually stop running it. So I would just hit uh, Control-C to stop it, stop my server. And then from my command line, if I run Grunt, It would go and run all of my test scripts. So you can actually see it popped up a window in the back with Karma. So it went and ran any sort of test that I would have created. It would have um, checked and see if it passed. If it doesn't pass, then, it, then the build fails. Can you run those tests headless? Ever? Not a browser? I don't know. With paint and I'm not a tester. <laughs> I should be testing, so. Boy, I look awful up here. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so the, what happened is if we, if we were to go look through this log, man, I'm going to need to go home and reassess my life. <laughs> um, all right, so if you look at all this stuff, it, went, it did an awful lot of work for me. So these are all based on these tags that they've got set up within my index page. So if we were to look at the bottom of my index file here, there's this there's a comment in there. It says build, um, then it says it's, this is JavaScript. So go and look in my scripts directory, and then we're going to actually take all of these, we're take all of these files, and we're going to create this plugins.js file. So if I were to look in my distribution folder, which it has just created for me, go into scripts, 
all that stuff that I just worked on is now in this plugins.js file. Well, actually, it's in scripts. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. Um, it went ahead and, and combined and concatenated, and, or I guess that's the same thing, minified all my code. And, and so now when I'm ready for production, I pretty much can just copy whatever the contents of this distribution folder are and push it up there. Um, if you want to do versioning, or I think they call it, um, what do they call it? Revisioning? Yeah, if you want to do revisioning, um, it'll go ahead and add all these, you know, this, this random number in the front of whatever file you have. So if you have cache issues, then you're not going to have that problem. Um, if you want to turn that off, you can just comment out the um, revision, I guess, uh, piece of that array, that string. I find myself doing that because then I end up having a bunch of the same main.js with whatever numbers attached to it, a whole mess of them in a, in a directory. So, yeah, so that's that's kind of it. That's, um, that's Yeoman, that's Angular. Um, I love it. I'm, I don't, unless, well, I don't see myself changing to anything else anytime soon. Well, I should say I'll use the tool that is right for the job. How about that? Okay. Yeah. What's the last thing on that? The licensing? Just go get it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's the whole, what is it, Creative Commons? MIT. Yeah. I mean, there's no, it's just open source. It's all, I mean, the, the, the one of the main guys working on it is Adi Osmani. If you guys are familiar with him, I mean, he's pretty much the, I've said this the last time, I say he's a JavaScript guy, I'll say it again. Um, well, he's a, he's a, He's, he's a Google guy, too. Um, anyway, but he's the one that sort of pulled this all together and built it. And he's, he said, hey, this is this is a tool that I thought would be useful. Just just use it. So Angular is in my two There you go. Um, oh, and then one question that I got from the last time I did this, that was a good question. There, uh, People are asking me about performance. Um, one example that I've got is with the, the old version of Rayquot that we've got out there right now. Um, I think on page load, it's about 1.5 seconds for the download. I think it's one point, about 1.5 megabytes on the payload, and then it's about 80 network requests. Um, we're doing the same, we rebuilt the same application, and it serves a much larger purpose now. And we've got it down to about 20 network requests. It's about 368 kilobytes, I think, on the payload, and it loads in about 300 milliseconds. So that's a pretty dramatic increase. And I, obviously, a lot of it is because we've concatenated and unified our code and all this other stuff. Um, but the, the thing that's nice about working with Angular and the routes and the route provider that they've got set up is that you know you're only going to load what you need when you need it. So Rather, the way Rayquel works right now is that it would just load everything for you, and then we would just hide and show things. But now we're really just, as you move through the parts, different parts of the application, we go and use an AJAX request to get that chunk of HTML, and then we, you know, we keep moving along. We asynchronously load that controller and move on. So um, I, I haven't seen any reason not to use it. I think performance, it, it does really well. Um, there have been a couple times where it, the, the page is brand new and hasn't been cached. There might be a couple things that, you know, there's like a little flicker of things that show that shouldn't show. And you can easily fix that with CSS. Or there's another directive out there called ng-clunk that you can use. So, so. any other questions? That um, the map lookup for the blue frosting that you did, how long did that take you to make? Um, a weekend. How? You said that Angular had a steep learning curve. How far along are, were you on that curve when you stepped that weekend? That was one of my first Angular applications. I think, I mean, just, see, I didn't get, I didn't get the opportunity to have somebody as generous as me to sit down <laughs> and explain this stuff. Uh, I worked with, a, there's a guy, there's a friend that I've, that I've got up in Northern Virginia, and um, he's been a pure front-end developer that has not worked with data before. 
And he's, uh, some guy said to him, look, we really need to do this, and I don't have time. Can you take it for me? You know, we're going to need to do some Ajax calls. And the guy said on the side, he's like, maybe you should check out Angular. So he saw that I posted something about Angular on Google+. Plus. We did a Hangout, and then within an hour, we're just sort of explaining things, going through pretty much the exact same thing that I just went through tonight. He got a pretty good grasp on it and was making API calls to Rotten Tomatoes and displaying the current playing movies just like I was able to do. Um, I think once you get through the syntax part and learning what the APIs are and you know just in, using Yeoman is going gonna, is gonna to speed things up for you. It's still good to know how to build those things from scratch. Just like it's, you know, you should probably learn JavaScript first before you dive into jQuery. It's not jQuery, it's JavaScript first. So, yeah, I know JavaScript. I copied and pasted something off the web. <laughs> there's a million JavaScript developers. No, there's millions of JavaScript developers out there. JavaScript developers. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we got it. one more thing. Uh, I'll find out who won the uh, t-shirts. Um, basically, my name is Terry Moore. I'm with Cardinal Solutions. We brought the uh, pizza. Um, just on my mail, I emailed one of the Google developers to see if we get any free stuff to hand out tonight. And they responded. So see, we got they, some t-shirts. Yeah, they get back so, to you. I mean, yeah, yeah. even for free t-shirts. I know. I was, I was really surprised. When I, when, um, so anyway, um, we got five t-shirts to give away. And see, last three numbers, one, four, eight. Oh, I think everyone's going to be close. <laughs> 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 you know, I've only got, uh, I think, yeah, it's one large. No, I didn't take it. You don't take it too <laughs> Six large. There should be a couple extra large and a couple large. And they're they're awesome t-shirts. They're the same thing as these uh, triangle JavaScript t-shirts. They're like uh, the American Apparel, whatever, made by custom I think, or something. One six four. <laughs> One three four. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you deserve one for the the one or two. And one five zero. And the last is one five four. Oh. <laughs> All right.